Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Joint Financial Regulatory Agency's stakeholder meeting to discuss home equity lending interpretation amendments on electronic disclosures and out-of-state financial institutions. My name is Matt Nance, and I'm the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner's Deputy General Counsel. I'm joined by several members of the finance agency's staff, including Credit Union Commissioner John Kohlhoff, the Department of Banking's Senior Counsel Everett Job, Department of Savings and Mortgage Lending's Associate General Counsel Ian Berry and Director of Mortgage Regulation William Purse, and the OCCC's paralegals Ginger Harmon and Nico Fisher, who are acting as the co-organizers of our meeting. We're holding this meeting through an online webinar, and I want to thank everyone for joining us. Like getting input from stakeholders is a really important part of our rulemaking process, and these meetings help us make sure we produce the best interpretations possible. Our webinar platform is GoToWebinar. Uh, some of you might be listening on your phones, some may be watching on computers, and some may be doing both. For those watching on a computer, there's a window where you can submit questions. If you have technical questions about using the webinar, you can type them in there and Ginger or Nico will try to answer those. We're discussing a pre-comment draft of amendments that is available on the OCCC's webpage for recent and upcoming rules. On that webpage, you can see the draft rules by clicking on, clicking on the link for home equity, electronic disclosure, and out-of-state financial institutions. If you have any comments on the interpretation amendments, go ahead and type those in at any time, and uh, I'll be getting to those. And if you're on a computer with a mic, there's a function allowing you to raise your hand, and then we can let you make a comment verbally. I'd like to first summarize our draft amendments and then lay out the proposed timeline, and then you'll have a chance to provide comments. These are amendments to the interpretations of the Texas Constitution contained in Title VII, Chapter 153 of the Texas Administrative Code. We have a total of five sections with proposed changes. So the first four sections are listed here. Uh, in sections 153.13, 26, 45, and 51, we'd add language on providing documents electronically, explaining that those can be provided to the borrower electronically in accordance with state and federal law, with citations to the Texas Uniform Electronic Transactions Act and the Federal E-Sign Act. These amendments respond to a stakeholder request. Uh, we received it late last year during our rule review process. Um, in response to a similar change we had proposed in section 153.22, Although we received the request too late to include with the adopted rule review amendments last year, we said we'd revisit the issue. And we thought now would be a good time to revisit the issue as we said we would. So that's kind of the impetus for these amendments. And finally, we have an amendment to section 153.17, the section dealing with which lenders are authorized to make home equity loans. This would specify that the Constitution covers a financial institution that is chartered under the laws of another state and does business in Texas in accordance with applicable state law with a citation to a provision of the finance code governing foreign financial institutions. This responds to a request on this issue that the agencies re received earlier this year from a bank chartered under the laws of another state. So that's the summary of our pre-comment draft amendments. Here is a proposed timeline for the amendments. You can see that we're requesting informal pre-comments by July 30th. Uh, we intend to propose the meetings at the August Finance Commission and Credit Union Commission meetings. There would be an official comment period during the months of September and October. We'd present the rules for adoption at the Commission's November and December meetings, and the amendments would be effective in early January of 2022. This is a tentative timeline, and of course, all interpretation amendments are subject to final approval by the commissions. So with that, I have summarized these draft amendments, and I will open things up to comments on the amendments. Uh, again, there are two ways to provide your feedback through this webinar. First, you can type your comment out and send it to us through the webinar's question feature, or if you're on a computer with a mic, there should be a function allowing you to raise your hand. So Ginger, do we have any written questions or comments through the webinar or any raised hands? 
Okay, I'm showing that we don't have any questions or raised hands at this time. I do want to wait for a period of time. Uh, if you have a longer comment or question you'd like to type out, uh, what you can do is type just a short statement in your chat window and say that you're getting ready to type out a longer comment um, so that we can give you some time to type it out. You can also, if you're on a computer with a mic, uh, use the raise hand feature. Okay, still not showing anything. I will wait for one minute just to make sure that anyone who has raised or who would like to make a comment has had a chance to raise their hand or at least type out a brief comment. Okay, I don't show any uh, chat questions or raised hands. So I will go ahead and wrap things up. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us and listening in on the webinar. Uh, rule updates are available on the OCCC's website and we'll also be posting the audio of this meeting. Uh, we are accepting informal written pre-comments on these amendments until 5 p.m. this Friday, July 30th. Uh, please email those to me at rule.comments at occc.texas.gov, which is the OCCC's ad uh, email address for rule comments. Uh, thank you all for attending. Please be safe out there, and we will see you next time. Thank you.